H Def is on and <clears throat> Greetings Unsettled Souls. <laughs> Sam I beat a It's the most I have for Christmas. It's more like an Easter egg. I don't know. It's the most I've got. Um <laughs> welcome aboard guys. It's the closest thing to a Christmas show that you are going to get. Again, I, I'm not against the holidays. They're just not the same. So I'm going to say the same thing that I always say for every holiday. And that is that if you are uh, blessed to be spending the holidays with some little speckle who you're absolutely crazy about. Someone, you know, it may, it may be someone who you're romantically involved with. It Maybe it's just a friend. Whoever. Uh, do make sure that you that you let them know. And uh, I, I I thought the other day uh, they released these, uh, and I'm going to get to the show and all the silliness in a minute. They released these shows that are uh, these shows. They released these statuettes of Randy Rhodes. <clears throat> Randy Rhodes was a huge influence on me, which is strange because I'm a keyboardist, but. The way that he would improvise and change what he was doing on the fly. He was remarkable at that. And it's something that I've incorporated into my playing. Well, they just released these figurines. And I thought, wow. I thought back to when uh, somebody had fallen in love with Randy Rhodes. And used, we used to refer to doing that to a song. That's sort of improvising. For those of you who listened to the song Sado, I mentioned it on my page. By track three, I mean by verse three, it's so drastically different. Of course, it's almost a different song. What he's playing is nowhere near what he was playing at the beginning of it. And I, I just thought back to how much I enjoyed things like that with a said person. And then I wondered, you know, did they know that? I'm assuming not. But I, I look at things like that. So I always feel drawn to tell people that uh, make sure someone knows if you do. All right, guys, I've let you all trickle in. I'm taking this out of my ear. The joke was hilarious, haha, -ha, but I'm allergic to most cheap metals. And as you can imagine, this is not solid gold. Hard to believe, I know. Nor is it sterling silver. So the joke is over on that one. I'll leave, this, I'll leave the hat on. How's that? I'll leave the ridiculous hat. Now, here's the way it's going to go, guys. I need you all who have tuned in, trickled in, found this on accident, wonder what the hell you're watching. I am going to go over the last 12 dunces. Ending with, of course, the Dunce Cap of the Month award winner this month. Now, here's what we're doing this year. If you vote, you are automatically in the drawing. And sometime after January the 15th, I'm going to have a random drawing, and somebody is going to win a copy of all 12 of the awards. I'll have them printed up on cardstock, and you'll have a copy of it. If you want, I'll autograph it. Uh, that's been known to make things go down in <laughs> go down in value, I've heard. Um, I will go ahead and <clears throat> I'll autograph it if, if you want, want it done. I need to know where to mail it to, and uh, you have to pick. You have 12 choices. Now, I'll be getting to who won this month at the end. These are your 12 choices. Now, who, whichever one of these get the most vote, they are going to get what Christelle had aptly named at the time as the Golden Dumdy. I would call it the, the, the highly revered Golden Dumdy. That means that they're going to get a little tiny Golden Dumps cap mailed to them, which will be the second one that they get, letting them know that they were not only dumb, but that they were dumb enough that you, the humble listener, had chosen them as the absolute dumbest. Now, you do not have to have picked the winner to win the copies. That's got to be random. So if, you know, you pick a story and it doesn't win, but I pick your name, you still win. That's the way that works. So we're not going to need recounts or anything like that. All right, guys, here's your choices. Of course, looking back, we had... The Dunce Cap of the Month Award for the BBC. Now, if you go back, you can hear the little time machine music. If you go back in time, you'll remember that this is the first time that this show has, at least one of the first times, maybe the first time that this show 
was able to send something <clears throat> to anything overseas. It's normally way too expensive to do. You can donate it to correctviews at hotmail.com through PayPal. But the BBC also has stations based in the U.S., so I was able to do it. And that dunce cap was for them encouraging children to be gay. Not accepting them if they were, but encouraging them to be, which I argued was child abuse. And the dunce cap said, <clears throat> the dunce cap of the month award goes to the BBC for promoting children to write gay and lesbian love letters as a class project, even if they were not gay. The fact that one of the most viewed networks, the in the world would peddle outright child abuse, I wrote, not to mention fake science, as if it was a cultural norm to push a destructive agenda full of lies. It will be forever to your shame. That was one of them. Um, was that was that what you thought was the dumbest? It's certainly, uh, I mean, I could understand it was drama class or something. You know, you have to pretend. You're, I get it then. But no, this, this was just weird. And they were children. Didn't like it. How about this? <clears throat> How about the one that went to the Denver Post? For adultishly firing John Caldera for accurately saying that there are only two genders. Intersex is only 1 to 2%, I wrote. And that's true. For failing to understand that there is nothing insensitive about stating sound science and for pandering to the PC crowd who are utterly devoid of scientific facts, you have lost all credibility. You have lost all credibility. May this award work to highlight how foolish you have become. Where the cap? Well, it was earned. That went out. That was February's. And uh, again, remember, you can get your schmeckle cut off. But the, biologically speaking, that does not make you a woman. You are a mutilated man. Your body, your biological makeup, is still completely either male or female. And for stating this fact, a man was fired. So that, that, that's, that's not a... That's, that's, that's a good candidate, I've got to say. Uh, Bernie Sanders. Now, this one... I want to make sure you understand why I'm laughing at him. Because the whole point here of the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, other than to make you laugh, uh, is to hopefully bring more awareness to the people as a whole. Maybe even the people who earned it. Although in most cases they're too stupid to be saved. If you've earned the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, you're probably pretty well gone. But this, this went to Bernie because... Not because he was being kind, which is a good thing. I'm not going to give somebody a dunce cap for being kind. But for failing to understand that the very fact that the need is there proves that his ideas are not going to work. Listen to this. The dunce cap of the month award goes without reservation to Senator Boyne Sanders. For the supposed benefits of governmental solutions, for, no, for pushing the supposed benefits of governmental solutions, while copious amounts of praise should be given to the work that was done by raising money for the COVID-19 outbreak, that's what, his, um, that's what his campaign did at the time, the fact that it was needed shows the government is woefully slow and not the solution to problems which face the nation. Otherwise, the help would not have been needed. For failing to see that this proves that point, you win the Dunce Cap of the Month award. Now see, <clears throat> if more people understood what that meant, it would win. But I'm going to tell you, most people are going to gloss right over that one and has no hope of winning. So I'm going to, I'm going to give it some hope here and explain it to you again. Just quickly, quickly, quickly. Because I remember when I did the show, I did so. The Bernie Sanders campaign is a private entity. And it was able to meet need the government wasn't. So if government was the solution, it wouldn't need a private entity to help people in need during an outbreak. And he pushes big government. So that's where that came from. Um, we had this one. America is emerging from the worst outbreak in over 100 years. This is right after the COVID-19 shutdown ended. So, 
well, you can't look at it through 2020 lenses now that it's almost 2021. You're going to have to, you know, really absorb here the time frame that it was in. They were trying to figure out what might be okay. America is just emerging from the worst outbreak in over 100 years, and the president has rightfully allowed each state to open with common sense, social distancing suggestions, and via phases which limit the risk of infection. And I was happy that he let the states do that, because each state has different needs. For failing to understand that such suggestions would not include nail salons, gyms, tattoo parlors, barber shops, and dine-in eating, you, Governor Kemp, won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. And again, this was before we have the therapeutics and some of the things that now would make that not necessarily the case. Uh, don't forget Mays. Uh, TEPCO, which is General Electric, uh, was warned, I wrote, that a tidal wave and an earthquake of the magnitude that was going to happen during the life of the plant was going to hit, and it did. They chose to build it anyhow. TEPCO, after putting the dollar above sound science, has now caused cancer rates to spike and has covered up the deaths. TEPCO has guaranteed cancer, heart disease, bone problems, and poor health for most of the northern hemisphere. For choosing to help them cover up to hide the justice, you at the First Circuit Court are complicit in the crimes, and you win the Dunce Cap of the Month award. Uh, basically, if you don't understand that one, make sure you sharpen up on your Fukushima facts. I do the massive Fukushima update each and every month. And basically, the First Circuit Court just covered uh, this year. And they're not going to persecute or prosecute the uh, General Electric for the damage which they have done, which will be ongoing and catastrophic beyond words for the foreseeable future. Uh, don't forget this. This was in June. <clears throat> Epic fail. Dunce Cap of the Month award. Goes quite deservedly to the dunces at HBO. You guys remember this. Who chose to stand up for black rights by banning and or putting disclosures on the first movie to win a black actress, Hattie McDaniel, the Academy Award. That was Gone with the Wind. For failing to know history and for Bowing into the PC foolishness of our time, HBO has won the hat, I wrote. Again, they put a disclaimer on Gone with the Wind, and Gone with the Wind won a black actress, the Academy Award. Let's stand up by putting a warning on when it's helping people. Uh, this one went to Governor DeWine, but not for the reason that you would think. He did, he did bad enough with COVID, but he did worse here. Remember I told you what TEPCO General Electric causing cancer rates and everything to go through the roof for the foreseeable future of the Earth since, you know, the half-life of the poisons are billions of years? Well, how about this? Science has proven to anyone, I correctly wrote, who is willing to actually learn that man has no sizable merit when it comes to the warming of the planet. Science has also proven beyond all doubt that nuclear power and the routine releases which happen even when the stations are running properly cause cancer and other illnesses. Since Governor DeWine called nuke plants safe and needed to combat global warming, which we can prove isn't happening by man, Governor Mike DeWine, of course, won the Dunce Cap of the Month award. Basically, he said, yeah, we know they cause cancer, and we know that they kill people, but we needed to stop global warming. And never mentioned that it's been proven that man isn't warming the planet. And even if man was, the solution to that would not be to run nuclear power plants with give cancer. And you, you, can, you can look at cancer rates near nuclear power plants and then look at them anywhere else, and you'll see that they're through the roof. The only exception to that are people that live near where bomb testing happened. And of course, they don't have any plants there because the plant workers will all get cancer. Uh, this is another one. Uh, this one, uh, if you pick this one, you're going to make life complicated for me. Because uh, Black Lives Matter in D.C. have managed to rake in so much money that they can no longer keep their mailing address open. And I can send it to Black Lives Matter in general, just find a mailing address. But it's important that D.C., the D.C. chapter of Black Lives Matter is who won this. And again, thankfully they have no money and they no longer have a mailing address. That cap got mailed back. 
As a matter of fact, whenever you vote along with that, I'll maybe also send you the hat if it's not too smashed. It came back to me, so it's going to be tricky if you pick this one. But the Dunce Cap of the Month Award went with our question to the unhinged mob known as Black Lives Matter in D.C. for failing to understand that the person who they were chanting about Breonna Taylor to, Rand Paul, has been against no-knock raids his entire career. For everything that has to do with your pandering, your foolishness, and your lack of knowledge about what you are even protesting, you win the Dunce Cap of the Month award, I wrote. And again, <coughs> yelling at Rand Paul for justice when it comes to no-knock raids is like yelling at the Easter Bunny because there is chocolate in the world. What? Rand Paul's entire purpose has been to stop no-knock raids. Idiots! Uh, here's, here's my pick for winner. Again, this, this one's when uh, the, there's a place locally called the Molly Stark Mental Hospital. Used to be also for tuberculosis, tuberculosis patients, and I think it was a nursing home for a minute. Now, allegedly, allegedly, yours truly has already been in this building before. But of course, they didn't know that. Allegedly. So what I did is we, we were going to film in there all night on Halloween. We were going to pay them. We were going to sign a waiver. We were going to give them free promotion. On and on and on and on. We were going to wear respirators to protect us from asbestos, which according to OSHA guidelines, if you're in there for only one job, which can take weeks, a respirator is sufficient to protect damage. We were only going to be in for one night. And then when they said no to us doing it, and we were raising money for charity, for COVID patients, when they said no to us doing it, they then paid to have a guard there on Halloween night, so they actually lost money. And they still have the same asbestos problem. We would have raised enough money that they could have gotten the asbestos out of the building. Now, of course, if a flood comes along, guess what? Poisoned. And the solution was given to them via this show. So, this was this is, my, this is what I would have picked. And it said, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes with our question to the ever-arrogant Justin Lapps. He was, uh, for not only, he's a uh, ranger out here in the, for the park that owns this uh, building. Justin Lapps for not having the mindset to stop, for having not only the mindset to stop a charity event, but for doing so with a lack of people skills, he was terribly rude. Rarely found in cockroaches, much less chief rangers. Hopefully the next time that Stark Parks wants something from the voters, those same voters will recall how you treat the public. You win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Uh, and remember, that was the first time that the Dunce Cap of the Month Award was ever given to someone in Person. So make sure you go back and look at that. It was from um, October. Don't forget about this. Uh, this is when, um, for first, yeah, let me make sure I can read my own writing. How about we do that? This is for the anchor who said that she was going to stay home and eat an entire bowl. Like, not, not a bowl as in personal bowl, like the serving bowl. She was just going to avoid Thanksgiving dinner and eat the whole bowl of mashed potatoes. Um, that was for our, our witness. She's still with the station. That's what I'm trying to see here. I do believe that she is. Yep, so that, that, that's another one. And that is for Katie Turr who claimed she was going to eat an entire turkey and a, mash, a bowl of mashed potatoes by herself. And there was the racist parks. I've got these out of order. This one's actually September. They loaded that way. Sorry about that. It's still 12. You're fine. Uh, in the world where everything is called racist, when usually it is not, it is hard to come up with anything that really raises the bar on folly and foolishness that you dotes at the National Park Service have managed to do just that. By implying that park attendance is tied to preference of skin tone somehow. For finding new ways to overplay the tired race card, the NPS wins without question the Dots Cap of the Month award. Because 77% of people who camp are white. 
or visit the park are white. Only 23% are of color. That's because parks hate black people and trees. Trees are racist. And if you're enjoying trees and there aren't black people with you, you're racist too. Alright guys, and then we've also got this month's winner. And of course, we need our Dumney music. Where is our Dumney music? This is the last one you can choose from, guys. Here it is. Again, you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Alright guys, and this one, ah, needless to say, I, uh, you know, maybe this is even dumb. This is probably even dumber than the parks. I'm going to have to explain why, too. If anybody in my comment line says that I'm giving this Dunce Cap of the Month award because Donald Trump is someone who I support. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to warn it with, with an answer because this is infinitely bigger than that. Way, way freaking bigger than that. What the Supreme Court did to win the Dunce Cap of the Month this month, and it's your last of the 12 to choose from, was say that states don't have standing when they have a problem with other states. And it was Texas who was joined by, I believe, six or seven other states against Pennsylvania and three other states who cheated by breaking... Pennsylvania broke its constitution to change when uh, uh, ballots were allowed to be accepted, which in turn hurt the other state's ability to be heard equally when Pennsylvania changed the rules, but other states weren't allowed to do it. That goes against Article 1 and 2 of the Constitution. Now, that's a matter that needs to be decided by the Supreme Court. Is it possible that this, my point of view would have lost? Yes. Would I have liked that? No. Would it have won the dunce cap of the month? No! What the Supreme Court has done, by not hearing the case and deciding one way or the other, is made it so that there is no way for states who have a problem within themselves to be heard. Well, historically, what, what, have, what, what has history taught us? In Japan, of the prefectures, in, in England, in France, in the Roman Empire, in the Soviet Union, what happens? They either break apart or they battle and break apart. They secede from the Union, they secede from the um, nation in some way. It is a disaster. The fact that the Supreme Court did not at least hear the case said, Texas and you other six or seven states, you don't have a say. So when you have a grievance against another state, it sucks to be you. The highest court in the land will not hear you. Does that sound like a good idea? No, it does not. So here's, the Supreme Court is getting the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, and I'm going to put it in the comment line on Facebook, so make sure you go and look at it. Degangi is my last name, D-I-G-A-N-G-I, -G -G the correct views. You can find it from there. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Oh, during history, one of the most constant lessons which are offered for study to the thinking mind shows that nations which have no say among states or prefectures of any kind when problems arise, are nations which break up. For failing to understand these truths as it pertains to Texas and the election, you at the Supreme Court win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award! And of course, I know you want to see the hat, and guess what? I have the hat for you to see. It's here. Alright, now this is going to be mailed to them. Now, if you would like to help with the cost of doing so, you can do so at the correct views of Hotmail.com through PayPal. Dunce? Worse. What else is it going to say? Uh, here's someone crying, and it says, Thanks to what the Supreme Court did, the U.S. can never stand against unfair elections in other nations. And the, 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 those are, that's a sincerely sad situation, because it used to be that America had the ability to preach to other nations if they were being unfair. America can't do that anymore since we've allowed this cheating to stand. And that's why I have, of course, no justice. Justice is crossed out. 
And uh, now this is a play on words, the highest chord. You have to explain this to some people. So, like, if states don't have, like, the highest court in the land, say that they have standing with not agreeing with one another state without a day in court, what recourse for injustice do they have? And he's thinking, how high was the highest court? That's that individual right there. Yeah, I know, they look better when Christelle did that, but it is what it is. This is going to be mailed to them, friends. Thank you for listening. <clears throat> Make sure you share, friends. And like I said at the beginning of the video, cherish those who you are spending the holidays with. Good night, friends. God bless and Merry Christmas. Yes, I said it. So full of hate.